and slowly I would rise and dress, fearing the chronic angers of that house. Thirty years ago, Vivi replaced the frayed laces in Jackson's work boots with bright red ones, telling him they were all Ross grocery carried in that length, telling him the clash of tan boots and red laces provided him a certain style, like a woodsman, a Florida woodsman. The following day, Jackson went into the woods behind their house on Turtle Dove Lane, and Vivi went too, not that he could see her crouched along a squeezed corner of the Crooked River. His shoelaces were eye-catching, dizzying through a rifle scope from 50 yards away. A trace of juniper-like gin surrounded Vivi's head. She'd tethered Big Boy to her ankle once he brought her to Jackson, but her husband's scent so close caused the hound to tug, and Vivi forced him down, knowing she was asking too much. Big Boy loved Jackson. Everybody loved Jackson. No one more than Vivi. She watched as her husband dug through his vest pocket and pulled out a turkey call. He was poaching, the season still two weeks away, and he hadn't worn his orange vest, hadn't told anyone but Vivi he was coming, and this was how she came to the idea. Her eyes stung when he practiced the piercing call on the porch, and again here as his trills warbled through the trees. Vivi's small hands nearly palsied the way they trembled. She lowered the rifle to search for her breath, to fight the urge to run and fall into Jackson's arms and hide from the very thing she had planned against him. Ellen and Kate were too young to be left home alone, and yet Vivi would not be rushed. She set the rifle down, massaged the dog's neck, and drove the hair from her face long after the strays had settled behind her ears. Rifles cracked off shots in the distance, Deer hunters, any one of whom could have mistaken Jackson's camouflage coloring for a buck. Vivi raised the barrel, pressed the cold scope to her eye, and just as Jackson spit out the call, held his fist to his mouth, and clenched his eyes as if seized by pain or prayer. At her feet, a soft, wavering moan grew into a searing bellow. Big Boy lunged and Vivi was airborne, dragged across brushwood that hiked up her jacket and tore the skin from her backbone. A line of breathy curses meant nothing to the dog. When the leash finally snapped free, Big Boy kept running and Vivi scrambled like a soldier on the ground, latched onto the rifle, and now Jackson's throat was magnified. Flecks of whiskers encompassed in a halo so close she could have been lying next to him, kissing the long tendon from collarbone to jaw. And there was Big Boy licking syrup off Jackson's jeans from the plate that had slipped his hands at breakfast. Jackson was laughing. She thought he was, laughing and looking for her. The blast echoed a white, high-pitched silence in Vivi's ears. She lowered the rifle and turned toward home, toward Ellen and Kate, just the three of them now, a mother and two children from here on out, and Vivi did not look behind her only above, in search of what Jackson had last seen. The sun, blazing through holes in the moss, a ceiling of tattered, filthy lace. <laughs>